So he was a bit of a mad inventor that I looked up to and built crazy machines in the back of our garage, which then turned into prototypes for refugees to use in their refugee camps so they could make their own flour. And even as a tiny little girl, I used to have this big map of the world up on my wall. And I used to get or make tiny little flags or little lumps of blue tack and just put them all over the globe where my dad was out helping people. And then what happened as I grew older, I started to ask more questions about, well, you know, why are these refugee situations happening? Why is there this poverty? Why is the world so difficult? And it wasn't this simplistic fight between the good and the evil, but just how it was all tied up in humanity and love and greed and power and compassion and so many things all entangled together make this world what it is. Um, as a child to be welcomed into that process and see that different skills can problem solve to make things better for people. And I think that's what really drew me in, um, that there was a place for everyone in working in justice and, and trying to make the world a better place, to use sort of a really common phrase. I'm not a natural scientist as such, but I really found my place in medicine, in the art and the craft of caring for people and health, not just as the absence of disease, but health as the ability of a person to flourish. I trained as a paediatrician and given what's happened in the world, particularly in recent years, started to see more refugee children and um, more children who were victims of modern slavery and human trafficking coming into those clinics. And that really opened my eyes to the fact that whilst we in general have a really strong legal and protective system in the United Kingdom, flawed as it is of course at times, um, but actually for many people, children, young family all the way across the world, actually that level of protection isn't there at all and it's so much more than just one perpetrator versus child. It's a big picture of multiple layers of injustice that all need looking at and so that's really where I've been trying to work on and train up my voice to not only sort of measure the bump and the bruise but to actually say okay so what's the pathway of this child get into this situation, where do I need to say no? Where do I need to intervene? Where do I need to use my voice? I'm increasingly working at policy level, dealing with that whole tangle of complexity to help people move forward and flourish afterwards. You know, we've got amazing colleagues who are health professionals, social care professionals, legal professionals, so many, um, and a huge network of modern slavery survivors themselves bringing their voice to the, the field to work together. So really just enjoying being part of a new era of modern slavery work where we're all working together and having an equality of who can be at the table as we work with our modern slavery survivor colleagues to, to make better outcomes and to bring the possibility of change. Justice is the responsibility of every human and I think when it comes to justice is not to get paralysed and overwhelmed by the sheer level of injustice in the world because everybody has their own life and their own people that they're with where justice can be enacted and decisions for justice and against injustice can happen at that really small scale and those little small decisions that you make every day for the good of you and the people around you to help them flourish and thrive and to restore and to to mend and to heal what is not working properly those tiny little decisions about your day are so important because they shape you and they shape other people so yeah don't get overwhelmed or paralyzed by the big picture come down for you and what's in your hand and what's in your world and if everybody did that, we would have a completely different society and planet.